Some of you may have seen the movie called The Shack, which is based on the very popular best-selling Christian book of the same name. In The Shack, a man revisits the place, the shack, where his young daughter was murdered. And there he encounters three people, Sophia, Jesus, and Papa. The name Sophia means wisdom. She represents holy wisdom, the Holy Spirit. And in the shack, Sophia is portrayed by an Asian woman. In the movie, Jesus is portrayed by a Middle Eastern man, not the blonde-haired, blue-eyed Jesus we usually see in Hollywood productions. And Papa in the movie, God, is portrayed by a black woman. And I absolutely love that. I love that the shack has been so popular in Christian circles in recent years because it really is opening up people's minds, expanding people's thinking on the nature and face of God. God is more like the wise Asian woman, the gentle Middle Eastern man, and the loving black mother then God is like the old man with the long gray beard up in the clouds who's keeping track of our mistakes and judging us. God, of course, isn't a person. Scripture tells us that God is love. God is the power of love that birthed everything into existence. But it's difficult for us to pray to, let alone wrap our minds around, the force of love. And so the Trinity, which we are celebrating today, helps us so much in our understanding of God. Our words of integration and guidance today, which Sue read for us, come from a wonderful book called The Holy Trinity and the, and the Law of Three, which was written by Cynthia Bourgeau. And at the beginning of that book, she asks, why should we even care about the Trinity? And she quotes the 20th century theologian, Karl Rahner, who says, If the Trinity were never to be mentioned again, most Christians wouldn't even notice. And that is true. The word Trinity appears nowhere in the Bible. It was a doctrine or a teaching of the early church fathers. They came up with it in the 4th century, more than 300 years after Jesus died. Jesus himself never mentioned the word Trinity, but as we heard in our gospel reading today for Trinity Sunday from Matthew's gospel, Jesus does instruct the disciples to bless people in the name and the spirit of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Jesus was letting the apostles know that God isn't one, that God is three. God is lover, beloved, and love itself. God is with us, within us, and as us. It's the power of three as one. And in the book, Cynthia Bourgeau gives us the beautiful example of the seed. There's the seed and the soil, two things. But plant the seed in the soil. Put them in relationship with one another, and a third force comes into play. And together, the three of them are able to create new life. I think that's such a wonderful way of explaining the Trinity. There's God and there's us. Two things. But when we plant ourselves in God, when we are in relationship with God, a third force comes into play. The power of the Holy Spirit, the light of the Christ. This fire is alive today with us and within us, right here and now. God is active and alive in our lives. Even in our outrage and anger, God calls us forth in justice and in love. And that is why the doctrine of the Trinity is so relevant for what we are going through right now. Because if God is with and within everyone, 
then everyone we meet is the face of God. And if we are all one, we are all of the same body and the same spirit. Therefore, what happens to me happens to you. As many of us learned in the six-week white privilege class, which our church took part in last year, we know that none of us are free unless all of us are free. I would like to conclude with these words that were written by Leslie Dwight. What if 2020 isn't canceled? What if 2020 is the year we've been waiting for? A year so uncomfortable, so painful, so scary, so raw, that it finally forces us to grow. A year that screams so loud, finally awakening us from our ignorant slumber. A year we finally accept the need for change, declare change, work for change, become the change. A year we finally band together instead of pushing each other further apart. 2020 isn't canceled, but rather the most important year of them all. My friends, in the season of Pentecost, may we awaken more and more to the truth of our oneness, our oneness with God and our oneness with one another, so that we together may continue to build a just world for all and bring about the kingdom of heaven right here on earth. Namaste.